this is my headless Raspberry Pi. Uh, what it's intended to do is it's intended to run without any wires connected to it. Um, you can connect wires optionally if you want to, or you can run it from a standard power supply. Uh, but it has batteries uh, connected on the back, so there's, in here there's six AA batteries. And it's got an on-off switch here, which is quite handy uh, for using. So I'll switch it on now. Uh, I've got on the top uh, RS-232 connector, so I can connect it as a, as a terminal to a computer. Uh, it should boot up any second there. And it boots up and it's got a splash screen and it's into the system. Uh, what it has is it's got four buttons along the top and these buttons correspond to uh, menu items along the top line of the display. And it's got five LEDs along here as well and the LEDs do various things. Um, the, the end LED here is for indicating critical situation. Uh, this green LED says that the system's running fine and there's no issues. Uh, yellow LED, which means the system's getting a bit busy. Red LED means we're under quite a lot of load here. Uh, as I was saying, it flashes between the, the red LED and the end, LED on the end when there's a critical situation. And there's the last LED here, which shows that the system's in operation. So after a minute, the display will time out and it just switches off the display by itself, uh, just to save battery power so it runs longer. So that, that should happen any second now. And to wake up the display, you would uh, just press any of the buttons along the top and that will bring the display back up. So there it goes, it's timed out. And so if I just press any button, when I press the button, it doesn't actually activate what's on the menu, it just wakes the screen up when it's, when it's asleep. At the minute you can see I've got a LAN cable which is not connected, and I've also got a Wi-Fi adapter in it, uh, and uh, that's not connected at the minute. So if I go into the off menu, which would normally be used to shut down, and then you can see there's an option to shut down there, or no to go back to the menu or collect the net, so I press connect to the net and that will go through and it'll automatically try and connect to the net on both Wi-Fi and LAN and it will show an IP address there as soon as it's connected and then after it's connected, uh, after a little while you'll see the date and time go from 1970 to the current date and time uh, using the NTP server um, well, while it's doing that, what I'll do is I'll describe some of the other options on here so if I press the alert menu and this just tells you in text what the system system status is and it's got a test option so if because it's always going to show green unless it get, gets under load so if I press test it shows this is like a critical alert so when it's flashing between the red and LED on the end and it's just showing it's a testing alert and then it goes back to status green after it's finished its test and I can press this to go home and from here uh, the only other thing is is we can uh, cycle through the modes so there you can see that it's picked up the date and time the current date and time there I can go through the different modes so the first mode is displaying the IP addresses that we're connected to which is handy because if it's a standalone system and there's nothing connected to it now you can immediately see what your IP address is and you can secure shell to it or you can via VNC to it so I press the mode button it goes and it shows us the system temperature which is quite handy as well and these values they, they change the colors of the LEDs so you can configure the uh, the, the particular uh, values it goes to the yellow LED and the red LED and then critical and on, on the system temperature only um, if it goes past critical up to another value then it actually shuts shut the system down for you which is quite handy as well so you don't have to worry about that if it's just running somewhere remotely without anyone around it if it gets critical temperature it will shut itself down so, and then we've got load average, which tells you how, how much load the system's under. Uh, as it's been connecting to the um, internet, so that, that load average went up, but now you should see it's coming down again because it's finished doing that doing that task. So slowly, load average is over a minute, so over the next minute or so, it'll come back down to zero. Uh, press mode again. Uh, it tells us the free memory we've got, which is quite handy. And this is 512 megabyte Raspberry Pi, so you see lots of free memory. It shows a swap used. Now, normally you wouldn't configure swap on, on this because it's using an SD card and that would slow the system right down. But under certain circumstances, you may need a swap, swap file. So if there's any swap file there at all, it'll go immediately to the, to the yellow LED because I, that's, that's not a desirable thing to have. So go on to the next mode. And it tells me what the two partitions on my SD card are. It tells me the boot partition, how much space there is free. And on the root partition, well, I've got nothing else apart from this demo of the system on here. So it's got plenty of space on the four gig card. 
uh, on the root partition so that's quite handy and again the uh, as the values of these get used up then you'll see the different statuses along top change and it's it shows you the status for the most critical thing so first of all if the temperature is is high then it will show that status as a priority over disk space because that's more critical so I go to the next display and it shows as any Linux admin knows the uptime is a really nice feature as uh, on Linux systems you tend to get lots of uptime so Linux ad admins tend to brag about how much uptime their systems had whereas Windows people they don't tend to talk about uptime so much because it's not so good on Windows systems and it tells you how many users are connected to the system as well so that's, that's quite handy um, I go to the next display All right, it tells me the serial number of the Raspberry Pi and it tells me the serial number of the SD card as well it's just a bit of extra information. The next one tells me the host name of my device. So rather than connecting by IP address, I could connect from host name. So that's uh, some information there. And it tells me the version of the operating system I'm running. running. I'm running Arch Linux. And I, I prefer Arch Linux because it's a, a lot lighter and it's a, a lot faster. Well, faster to boot. And I think that, that's the last mode. So go back to the, the first display where it shows the IP addresses. And so, that's a nice handy project for, for just running things like servers or or anything remotely without having to connect the keyboards. And what I'll do finally is I'll switch to, switch off by powering down. And, and that's a, a handy option to have as well so that I can power down the device without having to connect to it.